Hi, today we are going over section 8.1, which deals with the unit circle and reciprocal trigonometric ratios. So we'll start with a little review. So when measuring an angle in standard position, we always consider measurements in a counterclockwise direction to be positive. So for example, if I have my Cartesian plane here, and let's say we have an angle that is here, if we're measuring in standard position, we're always measuring off of our positive x-axis. Now, if we are going counterclockwise, this would be a positive direction. Meanwhile, if we actually went clockwise, that'd be a negative direction. Now, coterminal angles are when we have two or more angles that have a terminal arm in the same location. So for example, let's say I have my terminal arm in quadrant two again. Let's say that this angle here was, let's say, 130 degrees. We can have other angles that have the arm in the exact same location. So for example, if I went all the way around this way and then to here, that would be 490 degrees. So these two angles are referred to as coterminal. because they have a terminal arm in the same location. By the same token, we don't have to go in the same direction. We could also go from here over to here. So from our initial arm to this way in a negative direction would be negative 230 degrees. So all three of these angles would be coterminal. What you'll notice is they are all 360 degrees apart. So to find coterminal angles, we're adding or subtracting 360. So we'll do a quick example. Determine all the angles between negative 800 and positive 800 that are coterminal with 85 degrees and determine an equation that gives us all angles are coterminal to 85 degrees. Okay, so I'll start out with my 85 degrees. I will then add 360 to find a coterminal angle. So that gives us 445. Now that is still less than 800. So I would then take that 445, add another 360. That gives us 805. So that's greater than 800. So therefore, that's not an answer. So now we'll go the other way. So we'll go 85 minus 360. And that gives us negative 275 degrees. We'll take that. We'll subtract another 360. That gives us negative 635 degrees. We'll then take that, subtract another 360, and that gives us negative 995 degrees. So that's less than negative 800, so that won't be an answer. So we'll list these answers in numeric order. So we've got negative 635 degrees, negative 275 degrees, and 445 degrees are all coterminal with 85. Now writing out an equation, that gives us all coterminal angles is relatively simple. We can see we're always adding or subtracting 360. So what we'll do is we'll take our original angle, which is 85 degrees, and we will add 360 times K. Now, we'll write out our restrictions of k. So k is any real integer. So as long as k is an integer, then this formula will give us all angles are coterminal. So if, for example, k was negative 1, it would give us negative 275. If k was negative 2, it's going to give us negative 635. If k was positive 1, it gives us 445. If it's 0, we just get 85. Now it's integer because we don't want to have decimals, because if we have 360 times 1.5, that's not going all the way around.
Okay, next we have special triangle. So this should also be reviewed from last year. So we'll quickly go over how to derive our sides from these. So we've got our 45, 45, 90 triangle and our 30, 60, 90 triangle. For this one to get our sides, we do tan of 45. If we calculate tan of 45, that gives us one. Now that's the same as one over one and tan is opposite over adjacent. So therefore, if we're looking at this angle, it's opposite would be one, it's adjacent is one. It also works for this angle. So this one's opposite, it's one over it's adjacent of one. We then do Pythagoras and find this side here. And this side ends up being the square root of two. To derive our side ranks for this one, we do sine of 30 degrees which gives us 0 0.5. 0 0.5 can be written as one over two. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got 30 degrees here, opposite is one. Our hypotenuse is two. If we do Pythagoras, we find that this side is three, sorry, square root of three. Okay, so this brings us to something new, which is the unit circle. If we draw a unit circle, which it's referred to as a unit circle, meaning that our radius is one unit. So our radius ha is one. We can essentially use Pythagoras to rate for radius to point P. So we have this triangle here that's set up. Our angle would be here. Our x is this side, our y is this side. So because we have this triangle here, we can ultimately use Pythagoras. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we have our hypotenuse, which is just one because it's a unit circle. So one squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So our equation for unit circle is one is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now for unit circle, our coordinates of P can be given utilizing our trig ratios. So if it's a unit circle, we know that this radius is one, this is x, this is y. So we know that sine beta is our opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite side is here, our hypotenuse is here. So therefore we have y over one so essentially, sine theta is y. Now, cosine we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now our adjacent side in this case is x, our hypotenuse is one, so that equals x. So this coordinate, which is normally given by x comma y, we've determined cos is x. So cos of our angle comma, our y is sine, sine of our angle. So our actual coordinate for unit circle can be given by cos of our angle comma sine of our angle. Now, we are also going to go into three new ratios. These are we're known as reciprocal trig ratios. So reciprocal for cos beta is secant. So its equation is secant is one over cos, which if we have a unit circle would be one over x. Reciprocal of sine theta is cosecant theta, which is one over sine which if we're doing a unit circle would be one over y. Reciprocal of tan theta is cotangent. So cotangent is one over tan, 
which can be given by x over y. Now, first example, we've got point negative one, negative four. It's a terminal point of angle theta in standard position determined the exact value of the six trig ratios. Now, by the way, I can tell that this isn't a unit circle because we have something that is larger than one. So we'll start by drawing this out. We will mark where that point is. So negative one for X, negative four for Y. We will draw in our terminal arm, and then we will change this into a triangle. Now, if our X is negative one, that means this side here is negative one. And if our Y is negative four, that means this side here is negative four. Now we want to do our six trig ratios. So before we can do that, we need to know our hypotenuse. So we'll use Pythagoras. So we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So we have C squared equals negative one squared plus negative four squared. And essentially we end up with C is equal to the square root of 17. So that's this length here. Now we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite's negative four over our hypotenuse of root 17. Cos of our angle is our adjacent, which is negative one over hypotenuse of root 17. And then tan of our angle is our opposite of negative four over adjacent of negative one. So that's just going to give us four. Now you'll note I didn't write these as decimals. Whenever it says exact values, we leave them as fractions, or if we've got roots, we leave the roots. Exact value means we are not rounding at all, which tends to happen if we change these to decimal form. Now reciprocal of sine is cosecant. which all we do is flip these. So this becomes root 17 over negative four. Reciprocal of cosine is secant. So that becomes root 17 over negative one. So that's negative root 17. And reciprocal of tan is cotangent. So if we add four, that becomes one over four. Okay, looking at another example, suppose secant is equal to four, determined by our five trig ratios for theta is between zero and 180. So our angle is between zero and 180. So right away, I'll draw out a coordinate grid and we know it won't be, our angle won't be here or here because we're between zero and 180 and we know this is zero, this is 90, this is 180. Now we have to figure out which quadrant we're in or if we're in both. So we know secant is four. Reciprocal of secant is cos. So cos beta is one over four. Now, if you remember your cast rule from last year, you'll note that cos is positive here and here. So this quadrant's already eliminated. This one isn't, so therefore, it's not in this one because cos is negative here. So therefore, angle must be in quadrant one. So we're just gonna roughly draw in a terminal arm. Now, cos is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So that means we have a hypotenuse of four and an adjacent side of one. So we'll use Pythagoras to get that. So we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We want to rearrange that. So we've got C squared minus A squared equals B squared or the square root of four squared minus one squared gives us B, which gives us square root of 15 is equal to B. 
So next we'll do sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got root 15 over four. Tangent is opposite, so root 15 over our adjacent of one, so that's just root 15. Now, reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So that's going to be four over root 15. Reciprocal of tan is cotangent. So that'd be one over root 15.